Welcome to Rose by Sig Sauer. I'm Lena Michalik, and we're about to walk through and lay the foundation for great marksmanship. So we're gonna learn how to handle our gun, how to get a good stance, grip, side alignment. We're gonna cover that all right here. First step is our connection with the earth. It's our stance, it's our feet on the ground. So with shooting, one thing that we are always trying to control or counteract is recoil. So first off, let's understand what recoil is. Every time we pull the trigger on a loaded gun, recoil is just going to be a motion directly back and up. So whenever we talk about recoil management, recoil control, all we mean is that we're trying to counteract those two motions, back and up. So we're gonna address each one individually. So that back and recoil is almost all controlled by our stance. So it is super important. So now we're gonna talk about our actual stance. For me, my stance looks roughly toe to heel, shoulder width, or slightly wider apart. As a right-handed shooter, I like to stagger forward with my left foot, and if you are a left-handed shooter, I'd suggest the opposite. So I have this nice stagger in my feet, front to back, so that when the rear push and recoil comes and tries to push me, I've got this leg back to catch me. Now, I want my body weight to also be leaning forward because I wanna be able to utilize all of my mass to help control this recoil because I can use bone structure and body weight and just use a little bit of muscle or I can have a bad technique and have to use a whole lot of muscle. So if I were to try and stand up real straight and shoot, I could still do it, but man, is it gonna be difficult and wear me out. And the smaller you are, the more technique we have to have and the more body weight we have to utilize. So the easiest way of doing that, staggering those feet, making sure your shoulders are over your hips. Now my body weight is fully prepared for that rear push and recoil. So once again, that's gonna be roughly heel to toe, shoulder width or slightly wider apart, and then my shoulders forward. Weight in the balls of my feet and a slight bend in my knees. The reason we do the slight bend in our knees is that eventually we want to be able to pivot around, move from target to target, and also be able to take off running. Because if we're just standing there with our legs straight, we just got two sticks in the ground and we've lost a lot of strength and mobility. So, knees bent, weight in the balls of your feet, a nice stagger, shoulders forward. Nice, now we've got our stance and a bit of our body position and we're prepared for one part of recoil, the back. Now we're going to address that up. So the best ways to counteract that up and recoil come from our grip and our upper body. So let's start with our grip. For that grip, we're gonna want that good high uh, dominant hand placement. So no gaps between the top of that beaver tail and the web of our hand. We're gonna suit that all the way up we're gonna make sure that all three fingers are wrapped up nice and tight, and then our support hand. We wanna be able to utilize our bone structure here. So, by taking my support hand and rotating my thumb towards my target and locking this joint, it is now the strongest it could ever be. So, if I were to try and do any other placement, now I have to hold that with muscle and muscle always gets tired and wears out. So why wouldn't I just go ahead and use my bone structure? So I'm gonna rotate that wrist, get that thumb pointed directly towards my target, and then make sure that it is all the way up on my frame. If we are also not rotating our wrist all the way, we have a tendency to be grabbing a lot lower on the gun, and they're gonna see a lot more of that muzzle flip. So, Good high grip with your strong hand, high thumb with that hand, rotating our thumb forward with our support hand, thumb over thumb. Very nice. Now we've got our grip 
And the last little component is our arms. So let's do this together. I want you to take your hands, put them out straight, elbows straight, arms straight, palms together. And we're gonna push our palms together as hard as we can. Push together, and as we're doing this, start to bring your palms back to your chest, pushing, pushing, pushing all the way back. Then we're gonna get here and we're gonna stop. We're gonna look at our elbows and now relax. Okay, what did we just walk away with? Well, how much strength did you actually have when your elbows were locked? We have almost no strength or dexterity when they're out here this far away. So when we put a gun in our hands and if our elbows are locked, what is that telling us? We're not gonna be able to hold on very well and we're not able to use any of the muscles in our upper body. So when we were here, we actually had the most strength. Now, sadly, I can't shoot my gun right here, but man, if I could, it would be some good recoil management, but I can settle on a happy medium. So for me, making sure my arms aren't locked, but slightly bent and out to the sides allows me to be able to try and push my palms together instead of just relying on my mighty forearms for just grip strength. So now I can utilize my chest, my biceps, my back, and my forearms to help support my grip on my pistol. So once again, that looks like instead of all the way out, we're gonna make sure our elbows are bent and slightly turned out to the sides. One more note on arms, a very important thing is if we shoot with our elbows underneath, what we have created is a giant lever that that up in recoil is gonna try and use. So it's gonna make our job really hard because we're gonna have to try and hold that gun down with muscles yet again. Whereas if I just rotate my elbow, now the mechanics of my arm and this joint are helping me. My arm can no longer bend up and I'm able to push my palms together again better because I have opposing forces. So many good benefits from bent arms and elbows slightly out to the side. So we're gonna tie all of that together. We have a good staggered stance, feet shoulder width or wider apart. Shoulders are forward to make sure that weight is prepared for the back and recoil. Now I'm gonna get that good grip all the way up with my dominant hand, thumb high, support hand with my thumb pointed towards my target so that I utilize the strength of that joint and get it all the way up high, thumb over thumb. Now I'm gonna come to this low ready position right here and then I'm gonna push out and I'm just gonna bring the gun up to my face and I'm gonna make sure that my elbows are slightly bent and on either side. And then I can focus on pushing my palms together and squeezing my hands. And there we go. Now we are the most prepared for the back and the up and recoil that I think we can really be. So now let's figure out how to aim our gun and what a good sight picture looks like. The very next thing we need to identify is which is our dominant eye. Because just like hands, one of our eye is the dominant one. So an easy uh, test to do is to make a little tiny diamond with our hand. And now I'm gonna look directly at the camera and you're gonna easily be able to tell, but then I'm gonna continue on. So I'm gonna make this tiny diamond and my only goal is to look directly at the lens of this camera through my little diamond. So I'm gonna look at you guys and now I'm gonna bring my hands back to my face. And when I do that, I automatically go back to my right eye because that's the one I was lining things up with. Now, another way is if you happen to have a friend around, all you have to do is take your dominant hand and point at their nose. So I'm gonna point directly at the camera lens again, and you can see which eye I naturally line my hand up with. So I'm gonna go like this, and now you can see that my finger is lined up directly underneath my right eye because I'm right eye dominant. If I was left eye dominant, it would look like this. And when I did my little diamond test, I would come back to my left eye. 
Now, you can be cross-dominant. You can have the same side dominance. Um, and there's slight technique changes. But all we need to know is that that is the eye that has to look at the sights. Now, there's a lot of controversy on the internet about having to shoot with both eyes open or can you close an eye. Know that whatever you have to do to be able to see your sights well is the correct answer for you. I personally have to close my left eye in order for my right eye to be able to focus on my sight. And it's worked out pretty well for me. So know that whatever works for you is always going to be the correct answer here. So now we know what our dominant eye is. So what does a proper sight picture look like? Well, we're going to look at these iron sights. And when I bring this gun up to my face, remember, I'm going to get my stance, my good support, uh, dominant hand grip support hand grip, and now I'm gonna just press the gun out in front of my face, and for me, you'll see I automatically close my left eye, and now I'm looking at this front sight. This is what I want to be in focus. When that front sight is in focus, it's gonna be perfectly between the two rear notches and parallel across. They'll not be any higher and will not be any lower, smack dab in the middle. If you're cross dominant, all you have to do is keep your head perfectly square to your target and simply move the pistol underneath your dominant eye. But I don't have to do any crazy head tilts or anything like that. All I'm gonna do is line the pistol up from my dominant eye for me, this is a right-handed shooter lining it up with my right eye versus a right-handed shooter lining it up with my left eye. My head position never has to change. All I have to do is present the gun to the right eye. So now that we know what we're looking for, we're going to string all of these things together just a little bit. So we're going to get our good stance. We're going to have our weight forward. We're gonna get that good grip with our dominant hand, which is all the way up on the gun, finger straight, support hand, thumb towards target. And now we're gonna to come to what is called our low ready position. We're gonna get real familiar with this because this will be what we go to in all of our future training videos. So we come to a low ready. One important note here is that we don't want our muzzle <laughs> pointed down or pointed way up. We still want it to be lined up as much as we can with our target. Now from here, all we're gonna practice is pressing out, making sure our elbows are good and finding our sights. Very nice, once we find our sights and line them up, we're just gonna come back to our resting position. Now we're gonna do that four more times, making sure our weight is forward, grip is good. Now I'm gonna look at my target, press my gun out to my target, make sure my elbows are bent, find my sights, and return back down. Three more times, pressing out, finding my sights, making sure my chest is forward, and going back to low ready. Once more, pressing out, finding my sights, making sure my weight is forward, good solid grip. Very nice, so now we've got our stance, our grip, our side alignment. The only thing left is trigger pull. Now, uh, a very common thing is that people suggest that you place the trigger uh, within this first joint of your finger. But something that I find to be even more conscious of, with so many different hand size variations, that can look really different. So one thing that I always like to keep in mind is just that my finger here is not in contact with the frame of the gun. If it is, no matter what I try and do, I will be pushing the gun to the side when I pull the trigger. So it is mandatory that I have some type of space there so that I can pull the trigger directly to the rear without disturbing my side alignment. So for me, that is just what it looks like. Now I have a little bit of bigger hands, but even if your hands are shorter, we just wanna make sure that we are creating a little bit of a gap there. Nice. I also like to try and keep my finger lower on the trigger. Now that's getting a little bit particular, but it is the easiest place to operate this lever, opposed to all the way up at the top. 
But once again, I don't want any contact with the frame. So by moving down, I'm not connecting here or here to the frame. It's just finger on trigger. So let's rack our pistol, palm and fingers, push and pull. Now I'm going to get my good stance, weight forward, shoulders forward, high dominant hand grip, support hand grip, and I'm gonna to come to my low ready. Are you ready? We're gonna do our first actual dry fire. So all we need to do is press our pistol out onto target, find our sights, place our finger on the trigger, and now we're gonna pull the trigger. Our gun is totally unloaded, so all we're gonna hear is a little click, and we're just watching our front sight to make sure it doesn't move at all. So now I'm gonna begin pulling, 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 and that's it. A little click, finger's gonna go straight outside the trigger guard, and I'm gonna come back to low ready. Excellent job, we're finally getting closer to dry fire. So we're gonna go ahead and rack our pistol again, palm and fingers, push and pull, and I'm going to get back into my low ready. I'm gonna find my grip, get my weight forward, press my gun back out on the target, place my finger on the trigger, and begin to pull it. Watching my sights, pulling, 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 and a little click, finger goes straight, and I come back to low ready. We're gonna rack it again and do this a couple more times. Rack that gun, come back to our good grip, high up on that gun, thumb over thumbs, nice stagger in my stance, lean forward, and press my gun directly out. Now I'm gonna take note of my elbows, make sure they're looking good, they are. And now I'm gonna put my finger on the trigger and pull, pull, pull. Beautiful, no movement in that sight is our goal. Finger goes straight and I can come back to low ready. Just a few more times because now this is all the actions of shooting. So we're getting pretty good training right here. And actually the only thing that we're missing is recoil management. But we're still learning how to do that for when we do go to the live fire range. So make sure your technique is good here and then we'll have the best experience possible when we do go to the range. So we're gonna get forward, good grip, press out on the target, find your sights, Finger goes to trigger, pull, beautiful. Click goes off, finger straight, and come back down. All right, take a little bit of a break. Lay your pistol back down. Take a moment. Don't worry if your hands are getting sweaty. That's what happens. Wipe them off on your pants. And we're going to get into our first real dry fire where we string all of these techniques together. Take a second and then hop back in with me. To get set up for this dry fire session, what we're gonna do is just take our pistol, making sure we have that good grip, racking it, turning our safety on in that up position and then laying it down on the table. So we're gonna take this step by step, making sure from our toes to our fingertips that everything is doing what it needs to do. So I like to take a small step back from my table and then follow along with me. So step one, we're gonna get into that good stance, wide and staggered. We're gonna make sure our shoulders are forward. And now we're gonna establish that dominant hand grip, finger straight, high thumb, support hand grip, and come to our low ready. Now my thumb is on top of my safety, and now I'm going to push it down and take my safety off. Now I'm gonna press my gun out towards my target, find my sights, make sure they're aligned. Now I'm gonna place my finger on the trigger and begin to press. Pressing, pressing, pressing. Sight doesn't move, excellent job. Finger straight, come back to my low ready. Now I'm gonna turn my safety on by pressing it up and lay my gun back down on the table. Excellent job. Now we have officially run through all the techniques that we're gonna need for every single time that we interact with our gun and wanna shoot it. So let's do that five more times through. We're gonna take that step back from our table and here we go. 
stepping in, making sure my stance is good and wide and aggressive, shoulders forward, getting a good high grip, finger is straight, high thumb, support hand comes in all the way up high, then we come to my low ready. Safety is gonna be pushed down with my thumb. And now I'm going to press my arms out towards the target, making sure there's a slight bend in my elbows. My sights are all lined up and on my target, so I'm gonna place my finger on the trigger and pull. No movement in that front sight. Finger is straight. Now I'm gonna come back to my low ready. Now to reset for this drill again, I'm going to rack my pistol, push, pull. Safety goes on and I lay it back down on the table. Nicely done. And again, stepping into our stance, weight forward, good high dominant hand grip, good support hand grip, thumb over thumb, low ready. I'm gonna press my safety down, press my gun out on the target, find my sights. Elbows are slightly bent and I'm squeezing with my hands. Now finger goes to trigger and I pull, pull, pull. Hear that click, finger goes straight and I return to low ready. Now I'm gonna rack my pistol to reset. Rack, safety on and lay it down. Very nice, take my step back, shake it out. If your hands are starting to get tired, a great stretch to do is just pulling your fingers back. If you need to pause this video, don't worry. This should be exhausting. This is like working out, but in the gun world. So now we're ready to go again. We're gonna step in nice and aggressive, weight forward. Dominant hand is all the way up high, finger is straight. Thumb is high so that my support hand can get all the way up there, good and solid. Now I'm gonna come to my low ready. Safety goes off by pushing it down with my thumb and I press out onto target. Find my sights, finger goes to a trigger, and I start my smooth, steady press. Beautiful, finger goes straight, and I come back to my resting position. I'm gonna rack the gun, safety goes on, and I lay it down and reset for two more reps. So here we go. Stepping in, weights forward, Good dominant hand grip, fingers straight, support hand up high, low ready. Safety is turned off, gun presses out onto target, find my sights, fingers on trigger, pull, 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 finger goes straight, come back to low ready. And I'm gonna rack it and reset for my last rep. Very nice, here we go, last one. Let's make sure everything is perfect. Stepping in, nice stagger, shoulders are forward, weights forward. Good high grip all the way up on the beaver tail, fingers straight. Support hand thumb is rotated towards target, up high, and now I'm in my low ready. Safety goes off, press my arms out, slight bend in the elbows, sights, are perfectly centered, finger goes to trigger, and I start pressing, pressing, pressing. Finger straight, return to low ready, and just lay your gun down. Excellent job. Mm. I love that we just made it through all that. That is all of these steps to true marksmanship. Now, if you have any questions, please repeat this video over and over and over again. That last little bit there, running and stringing all of our, these techniques together is what dry fire is all about. That's what these videos are all about, getting comfortable and confident with the tools you'll need to be a great marksman. So please repeat this if you need to, and if not, don't worry, I got more information and more training for you in the next video. So let's hop into that.